Let's go down Legion as we're here like always and let's take this over again. I, I've already gone through this in, a, in about 30 seconds of this video but somebody wouldn't shut the fuck up out there. I'm really pissed. Uh, sorry, it's like you, I don't edit stuff out. I don't have any editing tools so when somebody starts being loud and they just fucking ruin everything you just did, it's really annoying. Um, people should know when the door is shut that means shut your mouth. But anyways, I digress. I'm, I'm really actually really pissed uh, because I hate redoing stuff. Um, so let's just get, let me see if I can re-remember everything I just said and get it back out of the way. This is going to be a 30 minute or so, 34 minute interview. I'm really excited to check out this interview. Um, it, we're going to be breaking it up into about three videos. Uh, and that'll be really fun to do. We're also going to be checking out this fan footage concert thing that someone asked me to check out. Um, that thing's about like an hour long, I think, or, or something around there. If you remember the the Mute Math, the Mammoth Mute, um, the uh, the Fox Theater, if you remember that stuff and all of that, we broke that stuff up into hopefully the songs. Now, found footage, I don't know how the hell I'm going to do that. I don't know how it's going to translate with me trying to stop and go i may just find a low in the song and just end it right there and then the exact moment the exact second we'll start back up in the next video who knows how we're going to do that this i'm going to go for like i said about nine to ten minutes each uh, the last video will be probably whatever's left of all the uh, of this interview and i'm really going to try to break this up into about three videos it's 30 minutes and i'm not going to sit there for 30 minutes uh that's just a long time this is an interview though of current times We've seen you guys have linked old, old uh, uh, interviews and stuff like that um, from like a year plus ago. And that's cool, but I wasn't into, you know, Twin Pilots when these interviews were even being made. So now I've checked out a lot of their stuff. I love a lot of their stuff. And this is a concert, or excuse me, concert. This is an interview from the here, the now. This is like September 8th of this year. Um, is If I remember correctly, it was September. Uh... And yeah, I'm so down. Let's just get into it, check it out, see what it's all about. Ooh, and sorry for the saltiness, but fuck, dude. You, you, you start something, you can't edit, you can't pause, you can't go, hey, shut up. And then you have to literally just, it, <laughs> if you've ever made something or needed quiet and somebody just didn't care, you understand how I feel. But with that, again, digress numero dos. Let's just get into it, and hopefully this will bring some, some laughter and some happiness to me. Let's go. I had the name of this okay. and everything last time I did this intro, but I never, uh, didn't do it now. I've never really shown anyone this, this spot. Thanks for having us. Thanks for welcoming in. It's good to see you. Yeah, thanks for coming uh, all Like I said, it's a weird it's handshake. A it's lovely to be here. It's, it's weirder the, the second time. It's part of the Midwest. It's a Pokeball. Being out here, I realized, like, wow, isolation plays such a big part in your creative spirit, right? Yeah, the isolation helps when creating something. I think that people would assume that the pressure of you know, making it another record to follow, kind of something that hmm. was considered um, a big moment for us in our career, would be the pressure. When really it's the tiny, it's the tiny comments that I think about, like when someone, like a friend's mom says, "I love, I love your last record. I, I could just press play and listen to the whole thing as I worked out." <laughs> this so is where I stopped like that, last when I'm time. I'm working on a song. Will all of a sudden like, hey, can they work out? <laughs> it's a tiny little <laughs> comments funny. about the music and um, the decisions made in it, that if I let too much of that in, mm. it can completely affect whether I turn mm. left or right. Well, look, it's really great to be here, man, in your in your studio, in your space where this new album has been made. Right. Um, yeah. You know, and, Influence. I, and I know that this is a particularly right. intense moment for us to catch up, because normally what happens is, you know, I catch up and then I like yourself after a few weeks of decompression, the album's done. Yeah. But I sort of snuck up on you and did this deliberately. What did really, you just say? When I heard the music, the idea of coming here and seeing you the day the album sort of got done, that seed was planted. Because I realized mm -hmm. that you had gone so deep in on the ideas, the concepts, and the entire complete thought of this album, and I wanted to get you at its most raw. And that's literally right now, right? I mean, right now. I, I yeah, I'm, I'm okay. Uh, I'm done. I'm tired. <laughs> and every moment away from a song is very valuable because of the fresh ears aspect of it. How was that break? That you took hmm. necessary 
it was it was very necessary a lot of the last album cycle there's a lot of traveling and well you caught lightning in a bottle i mean you had to write it as you had to go you had yeah to go 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 yeah the schedule was um very <laughs> unpredictable <laughs> you know this is the next thing we needed to do to to capitalize on mm. on the momentum mm. this time around I'm, I'm looking forward to a little more structure like we kind of know what to expect a little bit more which is fantastic and yet you find yourself from, from what i've heard of this album which is the whole thing thus far um <laughs> is that you have chosen this opportunity to dive deeper i love stories i love being able to dive into a story and write from that perspective a lot of yeah it's good man a lot of my writing is obviously very personal and something i'm working through but there's mm. some of it that i you know like to understand the people around me and try to dissect and, and analyze it and hi um dissector right here i wanted to cre i wanted to create a world that i could to go into and, and write from and hey is a trackball like in I that do. world i was um I, I i could control the exterior and what was kind of pushing down on me and, it, and that 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 control was very helpful in the creative process mm -hmm. where in, in reality we we are i can't really control that how people perceive it or what pressures are being applied to what types of songs should be written what type of yeah you do your own story and, video uh, and, and what decisions we should make and what what shows you kind of lead us to what it's supposed to mean live tv and all the stuff that you know i don't particularly enjoy you lived that life really lived inside that world as much as you probably could stomach on the last album because blurry face was it kind of makes sense because I feel like you like trench. This is, as you said it before, to some degree, is, is a geographical. Yeah, like, that's unfortunate too. It's like you've, you've created. I also said last time, as I was re or as I recorded this the first time, I said I may or may not pause it. I didn't get that chance. Um, I'm not gonna pause a bunch of times. I just want to say really quick that that is unfortunate for all of us that like to see the actual person behind whatever it is they do. Like I do not gush over celebrities. I give a shit about any celebrity, even him. If he walked up, nope, I can't point. If he walked up to me, I'd go, hey, what's up, man? That'd be it. I wouldn't go, oh, my God, you're so and so. I wouldn't care in that part. I don't care about your fame or your celebrity. It doesn't make you better or more important than anyone else on this planet. You know, I'm a huge fan of, like, Matt Damon. Um, but I wouldn't lose my mind if I saw him, right, or anybody. Uh, because I don't think they deserve that extra whatever. Uh, you go, I really liked your music, or I like your music. Your incredible talent, but I wouldn't like in a burning building if I saw like a woman and her child, and you know Tyler, I'd get the woman and her child, or the woman, or just whoever was closest. You know, I wouldn't prioritize him because of anything he's done, because he's just a person to me. Now I'm sure a lot of you guys are like, oh my god, he's the great, you know, that's cool, whatever. Um, but I like seeing the interviews, and I like seeing the stuff where they talk as people, whether it's on a late night talk show. We get to see, you know, the actor that's just laughing and having fun. Um, and the worst interviews, the ones that really do their own hype in a live thing, they, they live up that, the mystique, like um, Leonardo DiCaprio. Fuck that guy and everything he's about. Because even on interviews, he's just a reclusive asshole. Now, he doesn't like doing live TV. He doesn't like doing any of that stuff. And that's really unfortunate because we want to see him. And hear him talk. And I'm just going to keep playing. I'm talking a little bit too much, I understand. But, you know, In a world, that's what we want. Blurry Face was a character. Yeah. So you had to go front that. Mm -hmm. How did you feel at the end of that experience? Um, because I think fans will want to know. They loved the way that you announced your hiatus. It's always funny how you have to announce hiatuses these days, right? Which we never called it a hiatus, by the way. It just that's kinda, what we do. We it, just pick that term up. You guys like, picked that. Didn't you? We have to just be like, we got to call it something. Yeah. Can't call it a holiday, right? Being a musician's a holiday. Doesn't hiatus kind of say that like josh and i were sick of each other isn't that what that <laughs> means? hiatus is always the step the step before a split yeah it's like it's like an intervention yeah that's that's not what happened but if that's what we're calling it, it's fine yeah so what went wrong with you guys <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah uh, you seem to have a great relationship and i guess that even at the end of all that touring it, it i mean you tell me how it all felt at the end of the blurry face campaign with heathens thrown on top yeah uh, my favorite after i had done wrote blurry face we released it we started touring it a bunch i couldn't there was something sometimes it's hard to, to start creating mm. uh 
It's kind of like a muscle you have to work out. Well, when yeah. when the heathens things came, came up, I kind of took that as an exercise. Like, let me just get something going. Get it, give me a reason to write. Yeah, right exactly. Now. Okay. So I, I have a lot to say, but I just can't. That makes a lot of everything sense. Everything I turn to, every every progression. It was something that wasn't going to go on his personal album. It was something that was asked to be created. Right and he's like, I'm just going to do whatever I want. And it came out incredible. This this idea came up while well, this movie coming out. And I didn't know much about the movie. And, Ugh. you know, they want to know if you would, you would write a song for it. I'm like, well, I don't know. I, I, that's not really. I've never done anything like that before. <laughs> um, and then they, they showed me a few scenes. And they said, well, you know, we, we want you to do either like a shoot 'em up will smith like song or a twisted love song between the joker and um harley quinn and neither of those things struck me as i was like you know i'm just gonna write a song that i feel like is probably gonna be for the next record or, or at least be for our fans with my own twist on if i were meeting with those villains and i was bringing someone along like bring a uh, bring your friend to work day <laughs> what, what kind of conversation would i have in the car before i got in there um, oh, this is awesome. In a sense, if this song were to kind of, well, we kind of got shoved into the mainstream. Yeah. And I felt like I always wanted to explain to the mainstream audience, like, about our fans and who we really are and try <laughs> to bring them along and kind of go, listen. That's cool. This is, this is what you should expect. <laughs> you know, tread lightly. Um, but don't, we're, don't say anything. You know, we're we're powerful, and, and these kids have something to say, mm. and they're worth listening to. Mm. And so that song kind of became something that I wanted to write to, to explain. It's an anthem to call in new people and, and let them know what they're about. Thinking that it would right. in no way fall in line with the movie, and then it did, and then it just kind of took off from there. And so it was a good exercise to get things flowing. I didn't think we get some heathens talk. This is awesome. Yeah. Start writing more. Yeah, a lot of ideas. Strange hit. Yeah, no. Uh, the <laughs> yeah. chorus was a, initially the chorus melody was the verse melody because mm. I just didn't feel like it was moving around the changes like like it should. And um, I remember I showed Josh and a couple other guys on the road when I was just demoing it on my mm. laptop, and all I had was the verse and like just the beat and the vibe. Mm. I was like, I gotta find a chorus. And a few minutes after I'd showed them, we're, you know, getting ready for the show, and I hear someone, I still don't know who it was. It was one of the four or five guys that I was kind of just showing stuff to. They whistled the, the melody mm. of what I thought was the verse <laughs> down the hall <laughs> as I was getting ready. Oh, that's so cool. And that's when I was like, that's the chorus. So, that's how so do you cool. Get to trench? Oh. How, do you get, how do you go from a character based concept into something which is an entire world? I love Heathens, man. So much more fleshing it out and so much more color and the videos require so much more commitment and everything else yeah well you asked earlier like how was it to take a break the hiatus and mm. to step away for what is now i guess a year um honestly uh the moment our last show which was here in columbus it's like our final show of the entire cycle i went home and i started work coming up with this world hmm. and it just it took it it started to consume me <clears throat> I could think about I know every aspect of this world like I know what the weather's like in this world and, and it, I wanted to go there and write from that place so this is the part that I relate to most um, and this studio then kind of became because I said before if I was ever musically inclined there'd be times where my music would be super story driven and stuff like that in a sense my my version of it and i really wanted to dive deeper into the narrative of who blurry face is not just to me but who he's become you know it's it's always probably very true but it, it seems a little cliche to say you know it's we wouldn't be here without our fans and you know this is a you know this is about our fans and um it wouldn't be without them but I don't think they know how much they've written the narrative and 
how much of a back and forth we've been having without them really even being fully aware. Mm. This record is, I mean, they, they, they really did help write it. This thing wouldn't be breathing without them. And it's you guys. they helped create this world as well. Um, how do you, how do you absorb that influence? Because you can see it when you're on a stage and you can hear it when you have a chance to meet them and talk to them about it. And how do I hear them? Yeah. Like, are they taking, yeah, it is. It hmm. That's 1035. I'm going to end it right with that question. I might roll it back a couple seconds right here. Um, we might put it on like right around this area to re-listen to this question again uh, when the next video I do for this. I'm going to end, I am ending it right there though. That's going to be it. I want to end it right on that cliffhanger. If you want to see the full uh, interview yourself without me rambling on it, you know, I'll link it down below. I'll link it every time I do a video. Um, I can't wait, man. To hear heathens talk about it. Oh, or to hear him talk about heathens. Um, that was awesome. That was so far the best part. It's probably going to be probably my favorite part. Uh, I say probably twice right there. I think I did. Yeah, I... To hear him talk about it and have somebody whistle in and it's, to hear those little details. See, this is why I love when you when you listen to interviews, right? Like, I know a lot of people maybe don't like Jimmy Fallon, but when Jimmy Fallon, he's interviewed a lot of musicians. He's a very musical person as well. And he's had Paul McCartney on and they're talking about, um, oh God, um, oh, what's that song called? It's like, what do you do? da 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 and, and I forgot the song. It's like Sunday or something like that. I think it's called Sunday. I don't know. Uh, and he was talking about it. It's a really good song. And I think it's just by Paul McCartney. I don't think it's a Beatles song. And uh, he was like, how the hell did you get that song? And Paul says, I started just doing this song probably when he was making breakfast or something like that. And he goes, scrambled eggs. Da -da 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 -da, scrambled eggs. And like stuff like that. And I'm like, oh my God, that's just, he was just singing something. And then he turned into a real song. Those things are awesome to hear. It's awesome to hear when Ozzy Osbourne, when you're like, oh my God, how did you get the name of that song? And well, somebody was whistling it down the hallway after I showed him, you know, things like that. Those like moments. Like as someone that's, a, I'm, I'm not old enough to, to know the Black Sabbath era, right? I know their music, but like, they hear about how Randy Rhodes passed away and stuff like that from Ozzy and Randy, uh, that it was a, that the, they were sleeping in their bus that was on the property of a like mansion pretty much, right? Like this big property, like Florida or something like that. And somebody had a little biplane and they went and the, one of the, the bus driver was like, I can fly planes too. And he, they just stole pretty much a, a plane and they, the, the, the bus pilot, the bus pilot, was like giving people rides and he they were trying to skim the bus to wake Ozzy and everybody else up um, and they were trying to get as close as they could to the bus and they I think they hit the bus with the wing and the plane went out of control and it crashed into somebody else's like garage or something like that and like the makeup woman was there and the plane guy was there and Randy Rose was there and I think the, the pilot went through the windshield I think the makeup artist survived and Randy died Randy and Ozzy are considered to be the best duo in music like ever as far as rock and roll goes they're iconic and randy rose is just he's a talent by himself so when you hear these little things whether it's me telling you that right now and you didn't know that or hearing him talk about somebody who's whistling uh what i thought was the verse of, of heathens that i go that's the chorus or however he said it to hear those little details whether it's, you know, again, on this video, watching Jimmy Fallon introduce, he's done all these people. He's done, he's interviewed everybody pretty much now. But hearing those kind of like little tidbits is awesome. It's super fun to hear that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, man. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty excited, you know, uh, 10 minutes. I'm, this is already like almost a 20 minute video. I may do a longer version tomorrow. Who knows? I, I doubt I'll actually finish it up. I could, I could easily just finish the rest of this up. It is, um, it's like 20, 20 something minutes, but, um, 
I think I might, depending on how, how good it goes, I'll try to keep some kind of frame here. But it's a 20 minute video. Sorry if I paused a little too many too many times and uh, was talking. But I, you know, you, you got some things to say, you got some stuff to whatever, get out. Um, awesome interview though. Uh, I'm pretty, uh, I'm really down to get the rest of it. I'm actually really excited to, to do this. I, I think I might do, you know, some, some stuff tomorrow. Uh, we'll watch the, I'll, I'll record some more. I think of this tomorrow. We'll try to get through that fan footage thing and get a good chunk of that out. Uh, and then I'll do the random bullshit. I will be checking out a band and I'll say this when I'm doing the fan footage stuff. Uh, it's called I Believe When Venus Weeps, I think is the name of it. They contacted me. I think they did. I, don't, I think it's an official Facebook page. I'm not sure. But either that or the Sony's posing as them. But somebody from that Facebook said, hey, check out our new uh, our new song. We, we just did it. We do that. We, can you check it out for us? We'd be interested. And I said, sure. So I'll be checking that out tomorrow as well. I'll also let everybody know when I do the found footage video that I'm also doing that as well. Um, and so look out for that. I'll probably be uploading found footage and that new band tomorrow at the same time. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to get out of here. So thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. Like the video, like the content. You can always like, subscribe, and share. Uh, you know the rest of the spiel. You've been here enough. You've heard me ramble it on enough times. Love to see and love to hear all the comments. You can leave them down below. Once again, my name is Azrael, and I'll see you in whatever video I'm doing next. I'm sure for a lot of you, it'll be 21 Pilots. For everyone else, hey, check out all the other stuff I do. You can always check out all the different categories I do, whether it is anime, video games, movies, TV shows, scary horror stuff, and, of course, music. You can check all that stuff out. Links down below. Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch. And all that good stuff. Uh, yeah. yeah. You think I was salty at the beginning of this video? Watch me play like Rocket League or something on Twitch. Oh, I get super angry. A lot. Uh, I'm just a horrible loser. I just, I really, I'm a, I just get ass mad. I butt hurt. Woo wee. Uh, either way, thanks for checking out this video. I do appreciate it. And I'll see you in whatever video I'm doing next. Again. That's twice I said that. Later.